week of Trinity 15, Sunday, we believe the truth and we reject all lies. A false witness that breathes out lies and a man who sows discord among brothers. Proverbs 6, verse 19. Dear Redeemed, speaking lies and spreading them among others are listed among the sins that the Lord hates and are abominations to him. False doctrine and false practice in matters concerning the soul are particularly loathsome to God. False teachers spread religious lies that infect an entire community. The Son of God warns his people about this, thus enabling us not only to believe the truth of God's word, but also to reject the lies of man. But Jesus, knowing this, said to them, O men of little faith, why do you discuss among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet understand? Do you not remember the five loaves and the five thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The men called to be his disciples were discussing the fact that they had no bread, and that Jesus had warned them about the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now Jesus is patiently leading them through the lesson for the day. Jesus told them to refocus, concentrate on what happened with the feeding. We started out with a very little amount among thousands. According to the word of Jesus, it resulted in everyone being fed and more left over than in the beginning. What was spreading among the many was the word of truth concerning who Jesus is and what he had been sent to do. In the midst of this activity of the word of God, the Pharisees and Sadducees were challenging who Jesus was and contradicting his teaching. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Matthew 16, verses 8 through 12. Both of these religious groups consisted of men who were quite spiritual, pious, and educated. Their positions of authority in the community and their confident haughtiness enhanced their teaching of false doctrine. The spreading of false doctrine by these men could be likened to the yeast used in the baking of bread. It was capable of permeating the entire congregation and destroying souls for eternity. Thus, Jesus would have his Christians, particularly his pastors and professors, know not only the truths of the Christian faith, but also the lies of men. Concerning the truth of God, a soul will not fight for what one does not love, and what one does not love, one does not know. Concerning the lies of men, a soul will not reject what one does not hate, and one does not hate what one does not know. Ponder the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. First, they deny the person of Christ, that is, his incarnation, that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal Son of God. Second, they reject the work of Christ, namely, the perfect fulfilling of the law and the atonement for all sins. They denied the justification of the sinner by grace through faith, and apart from any works and cooperation on man's part. In addition, the Sadducees denied the resurrection, another foundational doctrine of Christianity. Neither time nor space permit a complete listing or even brief commenting on their rejection of the other wonderful doctrines of the Lord. The Holy Trinity, the means of grace, the ministry of the word, the two kingdoms, etc. These truths of Christianity, revealed to man from the first chapters of Genesis and throughout God's word, are what we believe, teach, and confess. Our practices within the church and in our individual lives reflect them. Part of that practice is being aware of exposing and avoiding the leaven of lies originating in the hearts of men and demons. These we reject and condemn. Another reason why is this. These false doctrines are capable of destroying an individual soul, an entire congregation, and our children, grandchildren, and generations not yet born. 
which Christian would not want to pass along to those in his or her family the heritage of God's Word, Jesus' truth, and the leaven of the Gospel? Blessed is that congregation and each soul therein who will not stand for the lies, false doctrines, and wicked practices of man, but who do stand for the truth of Christ Jesus and his doctrine of the gracious forgiveness of sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Prayer. Dear Father in heaven, all thanks and praise to you for your love, mercy, and grace in sending your Son to be the Savior, Mediator, and Redeemer of humanity. Lord Jesus, all thanks and praise to you for coming into this fallen world and being the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. O Holy Spirit, all thanks and praise to you for preserving the Word of God, bringing the Gospel to me, calling me into the kingdom of God, and making me an heir of heaven. Lord, grant me the desire to hear the truth so that I may reject the lie. Give me the wisdom to listen carefully and ponder all things that I may know what is the truth and what are lies. Bolster me with courage to stand on your word and in your church that I may remain faithful and that others may know the truth. Lord, keep me in your word and work. Amen. Hymn number 277, stanzas 4 and 5. How long, by folly blindly led, will they oppress the needy, and eat my people up like bread, so fierce are they and greedy? In God they put no trust at all, nor will on him in trouble call, but be their own providers. Therefore their heart is never still, a constant fear dismays them. God is with him who doth his will, who trusts him and obeys him. Ye shame the counsel of the poor, and mock him when he doth assure that God is e'er his refuge. 